Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, let me start off this video with trigger warning. This is going to be a Scientology video. So, this is going to contain my thoughts and opinions about this religion. And if you do not like those thoughts and opinions about said religion, you might want to go ahead and click off this video and tune into my more beauty related videos on this channel. Or if you do not like my delivery of said religious opinions, you might just want to click off this channel altogether. Anyway, so I'm planning on going to bed earlier tonight, so I've just gotten out of the shower. My hair is still wet, but I thought I'm going to test out my new setup. I moved my filming setup around today. I'm going to test it out a little bit. I thought I would have a little fun reading some more articles based off Scientology. So I'm going to go on Mike Render's blog and he posted a video, um, a video, he posted a blog called The Whole A List of Prisoners. And why not? Because it's fun. So he posted this on April 23rd, 2019. And so basically, we all know the hole is kind of like the jail of international base. Um, Mike Grinder has come out about stories of his experience in the hole. Others have come out about their experiences in the hole. Scientology has come out saying there is no hole. Um, but it has been featured in the St. Petersburg Times in 2009. It has been featured in Going Clear, um, both the book and the movie. Um, it's been talked about by several people, so obviously there is a hole in Scientology just trying to cover their ass. Anyway, so Mike, uh, well, Mike Render even states here that the hole has its own Wikipedia page, so. Scientology. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, so Mike states in this um, in this blog that he was talking to Tony Ortega, and Tony Ortega reminded him that he compiled a list of about 140 people when he first got out of Scientology that were in the hole, and. Tony Ortega actually made a piece in the Village Voice of this list of 140 people. And so, he is reposting that list of people. Now, I'm just going to go through this list of people. He says that there are people in bold that are that have subsequently left and have spoken out about their experiences. Then he said that there are people in red that have left Sea Org. Um, but remain silent. So we're just going to go through here. Um, he says, um, it's Lisa Allen Schroyer, C.O. Uh, Gold, Tanya Alexander, R. Compsec, Jennifer Alpers, C.O. CMO Ship slash CMO Int, Mary Arbuckle, R. Compsec, Gail Armstrong, PR aide, ASO, and Ant Management PR, Cheryl Asvito, WDC, Alan Bamgarten, I suck with pronouncing names, so we'll be okay, Ant Finance Offs, uh, Russ Bellin, COCST, Allison Biggs, CMO, Gold, now in red, he has Angie Blankenship, COB, PJT, Ops, RTC, slash CMO, Int, slash WDC, Dave Blumberg, X, Strata, Pam Ballstad, Gum CST, Veronica Broomberg, CO OSA, ENT, Pat Bugwitz, 
<laughs> I'm not even going to try. Incom, Marsha Calhan, RTC slash Rcomps, Aaliyah Chisholm, uh, Quell Gold, Amy Clifford, Exec Strata Gold, MFG, Lease Cole, Legal Off, IAS, Amy Coonley, CMO Int, R Comps, Gary Conley, Gold, and then in bold he has Debbie Cook, Captain, FSO, and then in red, Astra Coft, Fear, Deco, CMO Int, Gear, Gere Kudens, Kudensen. I guess I suck with these names, and they have really weird names, so this is just going to be really hard. Int Landlord Office, Rick Kunzen, Gold Musician. Seriously, you had the Gold Musician in the fucking hole? Like, what the hell did the Gold Musician do? Tony DeCruzen, CMO Int Execcom, Julie Denderfield, CMO Gold. In bold, Tom DeVote. We all know who Tom DeVote is. CMO, CWCO, CMO, and Blandine DeVeers, RCompSec, Liz Indren, RTC, RComps, In Red, Ryan Fear, CMO, Int, Sarah Fear, Exec Strata, Frank Fear, Gold Cameraman. The fucking Gold Cameraman. What the fuck did the Gold Cameraman do? Pauline Flood, R Comp Sec, Tom Ford, R Comps. In red, you have Monica Granis, Exec Strata, and Management, PR Office. The fucking PR Office. Like, some of these people, it's just like, really, what could they have possibly have done to deserve getting put in the hole? Like, how bad could they have fucked up to piss you off enough to put them in the hole? Russ Lyric, Gold Audio Production Sec, the Gold Audio Production Sec. Did he, like, not wire your mic up correctly? Like, what the fuck? In red, you have Lawrence Gunnott Stupkin Bronham in Landlord Office. The Landlord Office. What could the Landlord Office really and truly do to get put in the hole? Did they not build the buildings fast enough? Did they not collect the rent fast enough? Like, what did they do? Okay. Benicia Bentita Henderson, Exec Strata Gold. Dave Henderson, Exec Strata Gold. Steve Hodkin, Int Landlord Office. Did you have the whole entire Int Landlord Office in the hole? Because, like, seriously, I've read like three or four of them by now. Karen Holder, Int Management PR. Apparently, the landlord and PR were all in the hole. In red, we have John Horwick, R. Comps, Stephanie Horwick, Gold, 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 Quail Gold, Quail Gold, I guess is what it's called, Becky Hughes, Oaks, Gold. In red, the next two names are Debbie Hughes, Exec Strata, WDC, and Greg Hughes, Exec Strata, WDC, Marta Ida, Data DR, CM, I, CMOI, Liz Enberg, CMO Int, R Comps, Mark in Igber, CO, CMO Int, WDC Reserves, Michelle Jarmilio, R Comps Sec, Matt Jensen, AVC RTC, Heber Gench, President CSI, Paul Johansson, Int Landlord Office, like seriously the whole 
fucking landlord office. Christian Jensen, HCO, Chief CMOI, Charles Johnson, RTC, Cramming Office. What the fuck is a Cramming Office? Sharon Johnston, DCO, CMO, Int, in Red, Jacqueline, Jacqueline Kivanar, CMO, Int, WDC, Kobe Knight, Int Finance, Sue Kuhn, RTC, RTRC, Teresa Lanner, LHR, PPRO Office, Susan Laplanair, Exec Strata, Tom Larser, RTC AVC Gold, Tanja Lavlature, RTC ABC, Kathy Lemire, Exec Strata Gold, Angie Lemanier, Trent, RTC Gold, Robert Lamone, NCOM, Andy mm, Lenarak, R L R H P P R O Bio. Ooh, I don't even know how to say this whole name, but uh, <laughs> uh Lizavere, Ed Ent, uh, Gary Lou, L R H, audio visual, a fucking audio visual nerd, really? Okay, in bold we have Marriott Lidstein, RTC Gold, Jenny Linson, C O, C M O, Ent, W D C, Tammy Ludine, DCO, CMO, Int, WDC, Aaron Mason, A O C A O S A, I can't read it, O S A, Int, P R, <laughs> Int, Management, P R, so the fucking P R team's in there. Barbara McHenry, CMO, Int, WDC, Gold, in red, you have Janet McLaughlin, Light, President, I A S A, Carla McShane, CMO Gold, Marcy McShane, LRH, PPRO. The next two names are in red, so that's Abigail Miller, CMO, Int, WDC, and Jason Miller, CMO, Int. Ray Medoff, RTC, CNR, CS, Int. Bruno Morser, CST. Julia Morser, CST, Jan Morstan, CMO Int, WDC Gold, Clark Mor Morton, CO, CMO Gold, something else, Barbara Newton, CMO Int, CMO Gold, Marie Noel, Pinched Data, CMOI, Corey Norton, R. Comps, Anne Marie Ogletree, L. R. H. P. P. R. O. Jan Olson, L. R. H. P. P. R. O. I don't even know what the hell L. R. H. P. P. R. O. is. I know it has to do with something with L. Ron Hubbard. I don't know what the hell the P. P. R. O. is. But something to do with L.R. L. Ron Hubbard. Lucky Porter Story. D. C. O. C. M. O. Int. Marianne Powell. R. T. C. C. M. O. Int. Lydia Olander. C. M. O. Int. Gold. John Oldfield. C. M. O. Int. Kathy Oldricka. Oldricka. Exact Strata Gold, James Perry, Encom, Erd, Prester, RTC, hmm, in bold, Marty Rathbun, hmm, RTC, Wendell Reynolds, Int Finance Director. So apparently if you're an audiovisual nerd, a cameraman, um, PR, a landlord, or something to do with RTC, you're fucked. You're in the hole automatically. 
and apparently finance because Ellen Reynolds is also in finance off. Kathy Rinder, CMO Int, R Comps, Mike Rinder, CO, CMO Int, CO, OSA, Int, WDC. Linda Rinder, uh, not Linda, Rondon, R Comps, Steve Rule, Exec Strata, Int, Landlord. Hmm. Wonder why he's in there. Faith Shermerhorn, Exec Strata, Peter Schulz, Gold Musician. What the fuck did the musicians do? Did they play a wrong note? Were they sharp? Were they flat? Rita Sugarberger, COFCB, Deborah Siegel, Int Landlord Office, Ingrid. Oh, God, there's an SJ. Oh, my God. I can't even pronounce that last name. And Landlord Office. Josie Spittle, CMO Int. Denise Somerville, Audio Productions at Gold. Liam Spurlock, ASI RTC and Finance. And then out beside it, R.I.P. Is he dead? I don't know. Daniela Starkey, D slash C.O. C.M.O. Int. Norman Starkey, A.S.I. R.T.C. Joan Stuckey, Gold Inc. Sutter, R.T.C. A.V.C. Cram Office. What the fuck is a cram office? Somebody explain this shit. Fred Swartz, Exec Strata, Marshall Tamion, HCO, Chief CMO Int, and Lada Tamion, LRH PPRO Office. Somebody at the LRH PPOR, PPRO Office has fucked up too, because apparently a lot of these sons of bitches got stuck in the hole too. Fleur Thomas, RTC, AVC, Eval off. Katie Tiss, Feshback, Quail Set Gold, Burke Trussell, CST. Hmm. Jens Erskoff, Exec Strata Gold. Tom Vrom, CST. Next three names are in red. That's Bruce Wagner, Port Captain Gold. So apparently he's over the gold base. Karen Wagner, KK, CMS, Int, Gold, Mag MFG, Div. Don't know what that is. And Sebrin Walker, CMO, Int, Marketing. Hmm, marketing office, fuck. Danielle Walker Bailey, DCO, CMO Int, Richard Welch, Int Finance, Finance Office really fucked up. Christy Wellhair, CO, FCB, Michelle Wheelis, CST, Rena Wellberg, ED, Abel, International, Jessica. Winker, Gilchrist, Quail Gold, Kurt Wollard, CO OSA, International, WDC OSA, Gary Wills, Chief Editor Gold, Greg Wilher, RTC, Sue Wilher, RTC, Diana Williams, RTC ABC, Tom Willis, CST, Mark Yeager, CO, CMO, Int, and Lori Zern, D, E, D, AWOL, Int. So it's 140 people that were, that Mike Render could remember being in the hole. That's a whole lot of people that are stuck in this fucking place just because one person has a hissy fit over something. That's just fucked up to me. That is just really fucked up. 
And a whole lot of those people are out. Either because they got out and they spoke out, or they just got out and they shut the fuck up. I mean, the ones that got out and shut the fuck up really need to speak out so that a lot of people can understand what went on. But then there's still a whole lot more that are still there. If not in the hole, still attached to Scientology. Keeping their mouth shut, keeping their head down, and still doing what they're doing. And that is just sad. That is just really sad. Okay, so, moving on to something else. When Scientology is caught spying, it always pretends to play the victim. So, we're going to go to Tor Tony Ortega. And it is always, let's see, it always pretends to be the victim. So, let's see here. <laughs> it says here, Scientology kid protesting the Snow White pers prosecution in 1978 Denver Post photo. It says, yesterday, Chris Owen gave us a wonderful dive into Scientology's history as an intelligence agency. We thought we'd follow up with a fun document today that helped helps illustrate what he's talking about. If Scientology's history is spying is known for one thing, it's the incredible Snow White program. <laughs> that became the biggest infiltration of the United States government in its history. Scientology puts moles in government offices, bugged government meetings, and stole documents by the yards from 1974 to 1977. But, when, but then, one of its chief spies, Michael Mincer, switched sides and became an FBI witness, leading to what was then the largest raid in the FBI's history. On July 8, 1977, with agents entering Scientology properties in Los Angeles and Washington. Scientology immediately went to court to suppress the tens of thousands of documents taken in the raids and also wage war in the press, <clears throat> trying to convince columnists that it was the government in the wrong. And it was having some success. But then in April 1978, the Washington Post finally revealed some of what was in the material gathered in the raid and was stunning. Evidence that Scientology had not only been infiltrating and burglarizing government offices, but that it had set up elaborate operations to try to ruin a journalist named Paulette Cooper and had also tried to destroy Gabe Cazares, the governor of Clearwater, Florida, with a bizarre fake hit and run accident designed to ruin his career. So this was during the time where, okay, so Paulette Cooper had wrote her story where she had come out with a scathing review of Scientology. Gabe Cazares was also campaigning against uh, Scientology in Clearwater and was speaking out vehemently against Scientology in Clearwater. Clearwater, I mean, Scientology was doing everything it could to get Gabe Caceres out of Clearwater, trying to get him out of being the mayor, trying to ruin his career completely. They were trying to take Paulette Cooper down by any means necessary. They had even set up to, like, have her, like, framed for like threatening to blow up some like a building or something it was like the most shocking and terrible heinous things like they had this woman in like i want to say 16 it may have been even more different court cases and this woman was having to defend herself against all of these they had came up with so many smear campaigns against Gabe Caceres that he was trying to, like, defend himself against and still get them out of Clearwater, which never worked, but he tried. But 
when the FBI actually raided Scientology, they found Scientology's plans to not only get Gabe Caceres you know, like framed up and get him out of being mayor and found their plans for how they were like framing up Paula at Cooper, but they also found their plans for how they were going to take over Clearwater and turning it into this like Scientology mecca. So I mean it was all in black and white for anybody to see and read and understand. So it was shocking material and the rest of the media followed the story marked a major and permanent change in the way the press and public perceived Scientology and the potential for causing harm. A few days later, on May 1st, one of the Scientology's chief spies, Reverend Art Mar Marin, put out a stunning press release sarcastically admitting that Scientology had been spying on the government, but that it was a good kind of spying to catch the government to catch government out for being dishonest. You're a dumbass. <laughs> like, yes, of course, we're spying on the government. We're trying to catch the government being dishonest. Yes, that's not going to work, you idiot. You just admitted you were spying on the government. You got caught red-handed. You're a dumb ass. Just say. It's a classic, it's a classic of Scientology propaganda, the kind of thing that makes you realize no matter how red-handedly they get caught. Oh, I'm trying to get used to the new setup and my table wanted to take off on me there for a minute. No matter how red-handedly you get caught, Scientology will never admit to wrongdoing, never give an inch, and never stop operating the way it always has. For proof of that, see today how it tries to portray itself as a victim of bigotry of Leah Remney and Mike Render, who have consistently laid out today the same kinds of abuses and controversies the church was involved in 40 years ago. And this is true. Uh, just recently, with um, here in the past year or so with that kid who was 16 years old that um, killed a Sea Org member in Australia. The kid was from like, I want to say like Indonesia or something like that, Philippines, somewhere like somewhere in the islands. They, him and his mom, were in Australia um, and they're kind of being kind of hinky about the details on why um, like they won't admit to why they were there at that org um, but the kid ended up killing a Sea Org member and they're saying that yes the kid was there on the property for valid reasons um, what they're trying to say is that he was being escorted off by a Sea Org member, um, that his mom was there, um, him and his mom had got into an argument, and um, the kid was trying to save his mom from doing the purification rundown, which didn't make any sense. Like, he could have done, she could have done the purification rundown back where they were from. There was no reason for them to spend all this money to come to Australia for her to do that. And um, they would have already understood the premise of doing the purification on them. So it kind of made sense that they were there to join the Sea Org. And anyway, he ended up killing a Sea Org member. And they've never really kind of come clean on any of the details behind that. Um, it just has kind of just gotten pushed under the rug. And that's kind of the same thing that they do with everything. But in that time frame, they were saying that Leah Remney's 
show was the reason why he did that is because he got exposed to her show and that all of the stuff that she was talking about is what caused him to do it and that's the reason why he killed the Sea Org member and it was all their fault and blah 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 blah. It was a and &E's fault and Disney's fault and Leah Remini and Mike Render's fault. Which, no, it's not. It is the abuses of Scientology and the lies that they tell and the stuff that they do that is the reason why he did what he did. Um, not justifying murder, but that is the reason why he lost his goddamn mind and killed somebody. But anyway, so back to what Tony Ortega is saying here is anytime that they are confronted with something, their first thing is to switch the blame onto somebody else. So that is what they did here is the government came in and raided their property and they were like, well, of course we were spying on the government. We were trying to catch the government being dishonest. So we were spying on the government. Yeah, because that makes sense. Alright, anyway, so Marin went on to be named as an unindicted co-conspirator in the prosecution and saw 11 top Scientology officials convicted of conspiracy and sent to prison, including Mary Sue Hubbard, which was L. Ron Hubbard's wife, um, which it says here, the wife of Scientology, a uh, wife of founder L. Ron Hubbard, who also named as unindicted conspirator. Uh, but here's how Marin and Scientology reacted to the post revealed how the church was creating elaborate plans to destroy people. Ministry of Public Relations, San Francisco Church of Scientology of California, 414 Mason Street, room 400, San Francisco, California, 94102, for immediate release, May 1st, 1978. For further information, Reverend Patrick Lufkin. I think it's a phone number. The Church of Scientology today announced that it has been spying, in quotation marks, on the government for years. They call it spying, said Reverend Arthur J. Marin, national spokesperson for the church. But when call it, but we call it reform action, which is exactly what it is. We have been involved in exposing government illegalities and cover-ups for years. What? Can, can, I, I've got to, I got to read that back. We call it a form of action, which is exactly what it is. We have been involved in exposing government illegalities and cover-ups for years. No. Bad liar. Bad, bad liar. Marin said, and it, this is a legitimate and traditional function of the church. This is a legitimate and traditional function of the church. Snow White, Marin said, that the church has been running a program called Snow White, which was the major target of the 134 agent raid of Scientology churches in Los Angeles and Washington, D.C. last July 8th. Marin explained that the church kept the program confidential as we did not want to embarrass government agencies and congressional committees. I, 
I can't even tell if he has a brain at this point. That's how stupid he sounds. Like, I know some kids that can lie better than this. Marin went on to say that apparently some dishonest bureau bureaucrats found the Snow White program upsetting. The purpose of the program is, and always has been, to bring about political reform, defense of individual liberty, and securing individual privacy from with freedom from corrupt and dishonest officials. What about corrupt and dishonest churches? Where's our, what was that? Where's our defense from a corrupt and dishonest church? When these corrupt officials start using press such as the Washington Post for smear campaigns to try to invalidate the traditional role, re, the traditional reform role of the church, we decided that we have to go public. As religious columnist William Wilby of the Washington Star observed, Scientology is a religion that doesn't turn the other cheek. There is a reason why there's a separation between church and state, one. But two, I've never heard of a church, like, I, there are checks and balances in politics. The church isn't one of those checks or balances. Definitely not Scientology. Anyway, among the accomplishments and activism of the Snow White program are... Mm, mm, this should get good. Documentation of the existence of Interpol as a private French-based intelligence operation, which the U.S. Treasury and Justice Department support. We do work with Interpol. That's not a secret. Interpol membership includes communist bloc countries, which can receive transmissions via Interpol of FBI and American law enforcement file information. That is also not a secret. Because if one of our fucking criminals runs to a country overseas, we want them back. No brainer. Just saying. Anyway, documentation of Nazi control of Interpol during World War II and the continued presence of Nazi SS officers and collaborators in key executive positions of Interpol. I'm not even going to comment on that one because that just made my head hurt. Documentation of J. J. Edgar Hoover's correspondence with top Nazi officials until the days before Pearl Harbor. I'm just going to skip all the Nazi shit because I might blow my top. Publications of 200 pages for official use only IRS documents as the IRS papers which revealed policies unknown to the public including IRS handling of sensitive cases and use of Jeopardy assessment. <sighs> Exposure of conditions of more than 8,000 blacks confined in South African mental institutions sanctioned by the government in which inmate patients were used as cheap labor and forced to live in subhuman conditions. 
pioneering in the use of the Freedom of Information Act and assisting other groups of, and individuals to obtain their files under the FOIA. Over a thousand, doc, over a hundred thousand documents have been obtained. Over 23 FOI lawsuits against federal agencies setting precedents for others. See, this is another one of those things where Scientology likes to boost up numbers. Scientology's never been one of those people to just help people get information without them getting something in return. And since they don't like sending people to college. How in the hell are they helping anybody file any paperwork to get fucking paperwork? How are they helping anybody in lawsuits? You're not sending anybody to college, so you don't just have a bunch of lawyers sitting around. It's not like there's a ton of Scientology lawyers, and you're damn sure not going to be paying anybody's legal fees because they're not paying you for them. So that figure is just not... A realistic one. Moving on. Oh, here's another not realistic one. Filing a lawsuit for $75 million against federal agencies, including the Justice Department and National Security Agency, and Interpol for planned harassment conspiracy campaigns. If you weren't doing shaky shit, people wouldn't be looking at you. Exposure of the harassment and institutionalization of a civilized design, a civil, de, civil, uh, civilian designer who exposed deficiencies in the F-111 fighter plane program. That doesn't even make any sense. Why do you give a damn about this civil, uh, civilian designer? And why do you give a fuck about an F-111 fighter plane? You don't, uh, like, Scientology does not believe in joining the military, even though you raise L. Ron Hubbard's military status to, like, godlike status, even though he sucked at being in the military and did stupid shit and got put on punishment. So, why do you give a shit about a military fighter plane or the civilian that came up with the fighter plane program or exposing issues with the fighter plane program because you don't you're just making bullet points to try to make your quote unquote spying on the government thing look better so shut the fuck up smear campaign certain dishonest government officials who fear exposure have been feeding the press for years a concern a concerted misinformation campaign on the Church of Scientology in an attempt to divert our Snow White program from its reform objectives, Marion continued. But we are not attacking the government. Bullshit if you're not. You're pissed off because they yanked your fucking uh, tax-free status because you, they realized that L. Ron Hubbard was pa pocketing all that fucking money and it wasn't going to anything because he was living fa uh, fucking high off the damn hog because he had tax-free status and he was not fucking doing what he was supposed to do and he was doing it wrong. So you got pissed off. And you started spying on the government. Duh. But we are not attacking the government. Only those government employees who are, are the enemies of, dis of the honest government, those corrupt officials claim we are attacking our enemies when the fact is we are attacking the common enemies of the people and the Constitution as a church. We believe, as a church which believes that man is basically good and devotes itself to helping others, we have no enemies. Dishonest officials have enemies born of their own fear of exposure. And, is de and as dedicated reformers, people such as Nixon consider us enemies. Nixon considered everybody enemies. That's the reason why he taped every fucking thing and he was stupid enough to hold onto the tapes. Come on now. That's no brainer. Which is why we are on Nixon's enemies list. Everybody was on Nixon's enemies list. I think Nixon was on his own damn enemies list. So, 
such attacks are only efforts to distract and divert attention from what we are investigating and exposing, and Mar said Marin. Oh, Lord, Marin was fucking talkative. Citizens Spy Network formed. Hmm, this should be interesting. Reverend Marin announced the reformation of the reformation, the formation of a massive open spy network. Why the fuck not? Of honest citizens, which will expose and publicize illegal government activities. The national group called American Citizens for Honesty in Government, or the ACHG for short, is formed by Marin following his recent imprisonment for eight months for refusal to cooperate with the grand jury conducting a witch hunt into religion Government has had its chance to clean house after Watergate, Marin commented, but, feel, but fell far short of any significant reforms. Now it's up to the people to restore integrity to American government. You know what? These motherfuckers would have a goddamn heart attack if they saw our government nowadays, but anyway. Marin called for a for called on every honest government employee to turn over to the ACHG Ethics Commission information on illegal government activities and dishonest officials. We will investigate, document, expose, and publish what we find, Marin says. <laughs> okay. Agents exposed. American Citizens for Honest Honesty in Government is making public the first revelations in the American cleanup campaign. These facts have not been previously publicly disclosed. Employees of the Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA, who used to work for the CIA and can be viewed as CIA loyal. Some of these are currently no longer with the DEA, Washington, D.C. DEA offices. So then it's like a list of people, DEA, CIA agents in other cities in the U.S. It's another list of people. Group is, is also making public information on Interpol agents involved in drug smuggling. Interpol agent Augusto Cortez. It just runs, it lists some people. <laughs> It lists two people and it says runs cocaine and has raided cocaine laboratories and taken cocaine and sold it. Then it lists another person used to be the head of the Bulvarian Interpol and is a major drug trafficker. He uses Brazil as a main base of operations. The group also made it. Uh, has also made other revelations. The FBI is currently conducting an undercover investigation of minority businesses in Los Angeles. No level of business is excluded as long as it is a minority run and operating, including a simple soul food restaurant in Hollywood. So, I mean, they're publishing people's names and they're publishing current working operations. Okay guys, so apparently I'm taxing the hell out of my memory card, but anyway, so let's finish this up. So what they pretty much did was they took and exposed a lot of people who were working for the CIA and for Interpol and for the DEA's names and their operations in public, public, in, in public publications. And put out these citizens legal defense things and we're stating these operations for public consumption which put people's lives in danger and Marin said we are Marin said grassroots vigilantes spying on the forces of evil the media calls it investigative reporting dishonest officials 
with criminal acts to hide, call it threat to national security. It was a threat to national security. It was a threat to public servants' lives. It was ridiculous. It was uncalled for, and it was childish on the behalf of Scientology. Anyway, Marin recently posted this photo of himself. Anyway, so he recently posted a video of himself from his spy days at the Guardian's office, and this is what he looked like in his little spy getup pretty cheesy if you ask me. And then here is a more recent photo. The third guy right there is Marin. Um, he's selling a book nowadays called The Natural Laws of Management, the Admin Scale. Um, he said it's based in part with his work with L. Ron Hubbard and the biggest question is, does anybody ask him about his days in Snow White? Um, but that was pretty much the end of that article. Really and truly, I think his work with L. Ron Hubbard was not only dangerous and childish, um, I think Scientology's whole work at that point was childish and dangerous and if it did not cause undercover agents their lives, it could have and should have gotten Scientology in a lot of trouble. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I know this is a very long video, um, but I wanted to cover a more kind of just random article just listing off the names of the people that have been, if not still, were exposed to the whole. And then a more serious topic talking about Scientology's kind of infiltration and spying on the government to show what lengths this church will go to just do what it will to cover its own ass and to just be the way it is. Anyway guys, if you haven't already liked this video, um, subscribe to my channel. I don't post regular like Scientology videos. They do kind of come and go. But I am trying to get kind of a regular scheduled Scientology video at least once a week. Um, I do have a lot of articles to go through so I'm going to try to do these at least once a week if not twice a week because I do have a lot of them piling up on me. Um, anyway guys, leave your comments down below. Also look in the description box because my social media will be linked there. Um, if you run across any articles you want to talk, if you want me to talk about, um, give them to me and I will shoot a video on them. I'm going to try to get all of this <laughs> over onto my computer because my is full now, but I will see you guys on the next one. Bye for now.